Hi friends, now today I'll just uh, discuss on which topics should be majorly focused on as far as you know CPD goes. Now many students have asked me so which topic should we study and which should be left in option. Now I always advise not to leave anything in option like every chapter has some portion which is easy and which is direct. So you could also focus on that part and leave the, uh, leave the rest of it, right? So nothing has to be left as such. At least do the basics of each chapter. Now there are certain chapters which are completely theoretical. So just spend time on the theory part and you could score a lot many marks there. Now when it comes to maths students versus the SP or the non-maths students as we say, now the problem comes with majorly the non-math students. Now one word of advice is you should majorly focus on statistics. So I would advise the non-math students to majorly focus on statistics. Also in statistics please do not ignore the theory part. Now this is true for both maths as well as non-math. So do not ignore the theory questions which have come in the past because most of the theory questions are repeated. The numericals although are not repeated but yes the theory questions, theory is not going to change right. So that is one area where you could easily score 10 marks, around 10 marks. So 8 to 10 marks you can definitely score there. So you just have to majorly focus on the remaining like 10 more marks. So 20, 25 should be a decent score. So now let's start with the math section. The chapters which uh, I think should be not left an option are the first one is ratio proportion indices and logarithms again don't get into very complicated sums although yes they have asked difficult sums but that's just one or two questions not all of them are difficult now even in logarithms do not get into the log calculations you can just use or you can just study the basic sums related to the laws of logarithm. So this is one chapter which could be easily studied. Next comes equations. Now in equations also linear, quadratic, then simultaneous, all these could be easily, you know, solved. And uh, many a times we could go from, you know, the options to the question technique. That is you go the reverse technique. So that could be applied in case of equations. Just verify which option satisfies the given conditions and you could get the answer easily. So don't let equations and options. You have to study this as well. So you have ratio proportion which must be studied. Next is equations that needs to be studied. Now in inequalities also uh, very basic sums you know the given conditions and then just converting them into simple inequalities or just identifying you know which graph represents which set of inequalities just do direct sums so that is also one area which could be you know easily taken care of now the next chapter is interest and annuity it is not difficult the only thing is don't get confused between where to apply the formula for interest and where to apply formula for annuity it's very easily identifiable for example if you have invested the entire sum at one go right so that is interest the sum is related to interest whereas if you are depositing okay or paying off the money in installments then that is annuity and often in annuity they mention like rupees 3000 per annum is deposited rupees 500 per month is deposited so that is annuity okay then in case of loan related sums we use a formula for present worth okay and if you want to solve sums based on uh, sinking fund then we have accumulated value formula we have to apply them so this is also one area which could be easily taken care of just a couple of formulae and you could easily score marks here so this is also one chapter which you could <coughs> study yes many students find permutation and combination difficult now I would advise just do the basic direct sums okay together not together just do those sums and if you really find it difficult there is no harm leaving this topic an option it's absolutely okay okay although I would say combination yes combination sums are pretty easy 
that you could focus like number of lines obtained by joining non-collinear points number of triangles number of uh, quadrilaterals then uh, person can invite a friend in how many ways so all those sums yes related to combination combination is one you should not leave an option because it is used in probability so this is one thing which you please take care of permutation okay you might leave it an option but not combination so combination is basically where you have sums related to selection and permutation is where you have to arrange okay arrangement is number of possible arrangement so here you could just do the basic sums and just understand the formula for combination ncr and a few properties okay so this is one area which you can actually leave it an option but yes combination at least you know you should be able to solve the basic combinations next is sequence series now sequence series is again completely formula based so most of the sums here you know are formula based so sequence series also could be easily handled so this is one chapter which you could do next comes sets now here very rarely they ask numerical questions and uh, mostly again it's a theory based chapter so sets could also be easily done types of sets then uh, yes you could leave operations or, or rather you know the laws of sets that you could leave it in options if you really find them difficult the distributive commutative de morgans if you really find them difficult it's okay you can just leave that in option but at least understand union intersection and yes of course the addition formula don't leave that in option again that is useful in probability right a union b is a plus b minus intersection and likewise for three sets so don't leave that in option so yes sets could also be taken care of now the problem comes with you know limits derivatives integration now what i would suggest is <clears throat> you could uh, start with derivatives first okay so what you do is you start with derivatives just learn how to obtain the basic derivative straight application of formula okay nothing more so do derivatives first and yes don't leave the parametric form of derivatives as option because that is again very commonly asked so derivatives you please do it so first focus on derivatives okay basic derivatives and after that you go to limits in limits also you could apply derivatives and solve most of the sums using the lh rule so in limits you can actually solve it with the help of derivatives so derivatives don't leave an option just do the basic sums of u into v rule and u upon v rule okay those two and then you can apply derivatives in limits as well using the lh rule okay so this is the last thing which you do <coughs> if you get time so do derivatives and then go for limits now again in integration integration again do the basic sums like x raised to n integration of 1 by x okay so direct sums no getting into you know partial fractions and all that so for non maths really that would be difficult and even for math students it's very time consuming so integration do direct sums and yes don't forget to remember the sixth formula like integration completing square 1 upon x square plus minus a square 1 upon a square minus x square so sometimes they are asked as MCQ so don't leave that part in integration so that should also be taken care of so first go for derivatives then limits you could solve with the help of LH rule and then lastly go for integration only the basic sums that two related to x raised to n 1 by x that's about it no need of getting into the details of integration okay we now move to the statistics part of it yes again the first chapter has to be done statistical data purely theoretical you know chapter and most of the questions are repeated so do not leave this topic an option do the theory part of it likewise central tendency and dispersion again don't focus on like four to five mark questions right so you can simply ignore that do sums which could be easily obtained There's basic sums of central tendency and dispersion 
same thing is for correlation and <clears throat> regression please get through the theory very clearly first okay and then I don't think so it would be difficult to understand correlation and regression so correlation and regression can also be taken care of next comes probability now if you've studied uh, combinations okay then probability shouldn't be all that difficult you just have to divide by the sample space so probability can also be you know taken care of if you have given time to combination especially and even you have basic sums which you have done in your school level you know throwing of two dice tossing of three coins so if you're lucky enough you might get simple sums based on probability so probability also is not to be left in option next I would suggest not to leave option in is this chapter that is index numbers so this is again completely formula based okay you just have to revise the formulae carefully and yes even this chapter can be easily managed now the non-math student especially they find it a bit difficult you know when it comes to theoretical distribution now again in these two chapters especially sampling theory and theoretical distributions if you are not able to solve the sums and if you're not able to guess the parameters okay I would suggest just do the theory questions of it that should be enough you know so no need to get into you know very painful sums or a lot of calculative sums so just do the theory from these two chapters so I think the theory from these two chapters should suffice because especially in sampling theory most of the questions are theoretical so again revise whatever questions have come in the past so this is how we could take care of statistics so in statistics basically you have to do entire thing and yes except for chapter 14 and 15 here you can just focus on the theory <clears throat> so I'll just you know go through the recap of what chapters we need to focus on I just repeat ratio proportion equations again in equations if you really find it difficult you know solving cubic equations and uh, what do you say the concept of straight lines if that is difficult fine just leave it an option don't no need to you know take stress about that but you could do the remaining of remaining part of it inequalities again simple sums straightforward formation of simple inequalities and identifying the graphs then next is interest annuity completely formula based permutation circular permutations if you really find it complicated fine no problem if you just leave it however combination yes do the basic sums of combination forming of committees you know basically the selection sums because this would be more useful in probability sequence series again do the sums which are directly formula based okay next would be sets yes sets is one which you have actually studied in school even the non math students so yes even that could be managed revise the types of sets yes the laws of sets if you really find it difficult no issues you can leave that in option then lastly we have seen limits derivatives and integration now as I told you first you focus on derivatives then you could use it in limits as LH rule and lastly go on integration that to very basic sums x raised to n 1 by x then uh, you could also you know do sums on odd even functions mostly they give odd functions so the answer is zero like you know odd function as in the sum comes from minus a to a okay and if it's odd you get a value as zero so mostly they give sums for odd functions so <clears throat> this is the strategy for maths and in stats yes you have to do stats if you're a non math student and for these two chapters theoretical distributions and sampling okay just do the theory part of it if you really find it difficult you know identifying parameters and binomial and poison so just do the theory questions from the past papers and as well as the module so that should take care and I don't think so it would be difficult to get through through maths thank you